Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome to the Book Troop live show for the month of March. Um, we have read How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. Yay. That's thumbnail material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I am joined by Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin and then Lexi from Alexander Roslin. I'll have both of their Hi! channels linked down below if you're unfamiliar for whatever reason. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry to, like, bring down the mood and to, like, let you guys know that this is actually probably going to be, like, the last book troop live show. That's oh. so sad. I'm, like, really bummed about it, Gabby, but I really understand. Yeah, you know, I just Maybe. decided it's just like it's just too much you know so this is probably gonna be the last yeah. i'm honored like, though so much. You got <laughs> yeah, like, so much on yeah your for you guys to be on the last the last one i feel honestly. so honored honestly like what a way to go out thank you so much <laughs> yeah. literally and what a what a live show we're gonna have we're gonna make it the best for everyone yeah. <laughs> 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 <Nikia>. <laughs> i was like if nobody catches on that it's air pulls and i'm gonna feel really bad <laughs> I could not look at either of you. I know. <laughs> I started yeah. to, and I was like, "Nope." <laughs> I know. I'm yeah, so sorry. I had to cut on my mouth. <laughs> we had to do it, you know, like doing the live show on April Fools. I just had to do it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that was so good. That was so good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry to start like that. This is definitely not the last Book Troop live show. No. <laughs> no. no. We're just getting started. There's gonna be like yeah. 2,500 more live shows. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah started over here so um uh, i'm sorry about that um but thank you so much to everybody who's joining us this month and for reading along with us i super appreciate you all for being here and thank you so much to gavin and lexi for joining me um while people are rolling in um i would love to know if you did end up reading the book with us this month um i would love if you would put like maybe a red heart in the chat and then maybe oh if you haven't gone around to reading the book yet or you don't plan to maybe you can put a black heart in the chat just so i can get a visual um for who's all read it and who hasn't yet um we won't be jumping into spoilers like right away so you can hang out if you have not read it um but yeah maybe while they're doing that um gavin and lexi would you just want to kind of introduce yourself and maybe talk a little bit about your channel and like you know if you want to promote any new videos or anything like that feel free to <laughs> absolutely i love introducing myself i <laughs> I'm Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin, and I have been d dipping my toe into a lot of things recently. Um, not not even just like booktube content, but I like myself some paranormal content too. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like making some, even some reaction stuff I've got coming up. So it's going to be, yeah, I know, right? It's So it's going to be a time. It'll be a yes. time. So that's what you can always expect with my channel. You, you can expect a time. <laughs> and it's always so good. I'm a huge fan of all of your paranormal content. Like, I just think it's the best ever. So I'll vouch. I, Biggest fan. I, thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> Too sweet. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, I'm Lexi. My channel is Alexandra Roslyn or Roslyn. And I do book content for the most part. I do have a vlog going up surprisingly because I feel like I haven't posted in a while. Ooh. And I'm so excited for tomorrow's because it's like the most booktube on brand I've ever been in my life. Like Ooh. I literally do a haul, I go book shopping and I build a bookcase and I'm like, oh. who is she? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm excited. Yeah. Triple threat. Like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Cause I haven't been posting as much. But I really, I want to. I want to yeah. go back to posting. You're just much. doing quality over quantity. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You are so sweet. Thank you. I aspire to be like you guys, though, because I feel like your content is always top tier. And also, you are so good at producing like quality content consistently. Both of you, amazing. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Like you're like the best hype woman ever. Seriously. I know. <laughs> Thank no, you. Like <laughs> did a recent video that was like waking up at 5 a.m or something to read every day that was so fun i love that oh thank you gabby that's yeah, so that nice really of you sweet. that was really cool oh thanks yeah, and then gavin oh my gosh last night or the night before me and rachel were watching your haunted vlog that you just put out again i was like watching the whole thing with her again and we were dying we were cracking up like so good. it's, it's so I had, had to take the p-i-double-s i don't know if i can say the p word in the, in the live show just yet it's, it's the first five minutes the first five minutes i don't want to uh but I, I like to whenever i'm scared i usually do make fun of it that's how mm -hmm. i go mm -hmm. that's amazing 
humor yeah, and uh cool. horror they're like besties yeah. they're right next to each other you know i know i know <laughs> what a beautiful little segue <laughs> yes i was gonna say that's like the perfect um segue um because yeah this book was very um humorous and nice. or at the same time much like a lot of grady hendrix um maybe for anybody that's here that has not yet read the book um gavin would you want to maybe give like a spoiler free just like little synopsis for anybody who doesn't know what the book's about <laughs> Okay, so there is a spoiler-free synopsis that I feel is so misleading to what the book actually is. So I'm wondering, should I do the misleading <laughs> official spoiler-free yes. summary? Yeah, I, feel I like I that. Okay. okay, so the official misleading summary is we have a character called Louise and she has just suffered from the death of her parents that happened very suddenly and she has to go back to her family home in order to help sell this house, which is on the market, but it is, it's said to be haunted. Mm -hmm. And what it's haunted by is something that gets gradually revealed as the the book goes on. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and yeah, it's, it's an exploration of family dynamics, sibling relationships, and all of that. <laughs> So. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, beautifully done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, sweet. Um, and then while um we're going to be talking about our ratings for the book, I would love in the chat if you can put you know what you rated this book, how you felt about it, if you finished it. I saw there was a little bit of DNFs for this one, <laughs> which is you know, understandable. <laughs> um, that's fine. Um, but just let us know how you rated this book, how you felt about it. I would love to know if you would you know, be so kind to put it in the chat. And then I think we'll reveal our ratings, which should be exciting because we don't know how each other feels about it for the no. most part. <laughs> I feel so like I'm going to be alone. I'm scared. <laughs> do we want to just do three, two, one and all say at the same time? Or do we okay. want to go like one by one? Let's... No, let's do it at the same time. Yeah, same time. Same time. <laughs> I feel like when Lexi's on the book trip, I'm just like, let's do it all at once. <laughs> 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 let's fucking go. Okay. Then should we do Okay. I'll just count down then, and then we'll all say our ratings and hold up fingers so we know, so in case okay. we don't hear each other. Just... Okay, that's a good idea. That's a good okay. idea. Okay. 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 Ready? Three, two, one. Three, two. Four point five. <laughs> I loved it! I loved it! It was so good! <laughs> I love wow. how that worked. It worked. Oh Wait a second. So it was three, two, four point five. <laughs> No, this is great. I love this that we perfect. all have different opinions on it because then I feel like all across the board, people will feel represented and seen yes. in this live show, you know? Yes. Oh my exactly. gosh, amazing. Wow. Okay, so um, Gavin, why don't you start? Why was it two stars without getting into spoilers? Just kind of general, how you felt about it. I was more scared from reading Goosebumps in all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I... Okay, so yeah, like spoiler free, so I'll not go into like, <clears throat> like twists and stuff, but like I feel like maybe I'm just a little bit hardened by some of the scarier things sc that happen in this book that I yeah. feel like, I don't know, I, I grew up with Goosebumps and it just, it felt a little bit like it could have just been a Goosebumps. I would feel very mm. comfortable recommending this book to a young adult. Like, and I'm, I'm talking like 13, 14. Get, mm -hmm. Like, obviously not with the, um, like, the Other strong stuff. language. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, the strong language and stuff. I feel like, I feel comfortable that it probably wouldn't be too bad for a young teen. It just, mm -hmm. I, well, one, yeah, I felt like I was misled a bit because I was expecting something different. But even if I had have known going into it what it would become, I still feel like I've seen scarier and I feel like, Having like I honestly have loved Grady Hendrix's books and books in the past. Mm -hmm. His type of humor, I felt, made this book a little bit too silly for me, mm. and I genuinely felt like I don't I, I don't know how to describe it, but like I was just I mean I was a little bit bored in the middle. Mm -hmm. It just felt like. I, I felt nothing for half of it. I I was numb. That I feel totally like makes I'm, sense. I'm numb to this whole thing. <laughs> well, they were puppets, so yeah. I don't know how that has anything to do with being numb. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're hollow. I guess they're hollow. That's hollow, it. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, my god. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. 
And then, um, Lexi, what what did you think? Why is it four and a half stars for you? Okay, so first of all, I'm not like a horror girly, you know what I mean? And so I feel like my criteria is coming at it from more of like just a regular reader. Um, so I think that like your opinions are actually going to be way more valid than mine in this live show because what I like in horror – is the silliness. Like I mm -hmm. like it when you can have an author who has like more than one trick up their sleeve. And so for me, I enjoyed that parts of this. I was cringing and I was really scared. And then other parts I was like laughing out loud. And then other parts I was extremely like emotionally touched, especially from a lot of the symbolism at the end. Mm -hmm. Like I cried. I cried at the end. And then I called my dad and I was like, can I come home? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel that. I feel like the fact that Grady Hendrix had that range of emotions, mm -hmm. I was able to kind of forgive a couple of the things that I was like, well, I don't know about this just mm -hmm. because it was such an enjoyable read. So for me, I just enjoyed like my experience overall. Like it was a silly, yeah. goofy time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you loved it. Um, I, I agree. Like, so <laughs> I'm feeling very like middle of the road with this one with a yes. three star, you know, like there are definitely some things that I really enjoyed about it. And then there's some things that I didn't. Um, I feel like for me, the length of this book, it just felt way too long. Like, I don't mm. think this story needed to be 400 pages. I feel like yeah. there were so many times where I was like, this could have been cut down and like, it would have made it a lot better. Um, I also feel like, you know, the nature of this book, it was something like, I wasn't expecting this book to be about what it was really kind of about at the end yeah. of the day. Um, I was expecting it to just be more of like a typical kind of haunted house type of vibe. Um, and I don't know, some of it worked for me and then some of it like really didn't. Um, I don't know if you guys listened to the audiobook at all. I did. Yeah, okay. So, so I was listening to the audiobook and like the voice of that one character, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pump, pumpkin? Pump, pumpkin? Pumpkin? Yeah, pumpkin? I just don't know if I could get on board with it. It was just kind of like sometimes it was kind of <laughs> creepy. And then sometimes I was like, this feels really cheesy and I just couldn't do it. Um, yeah. But yeah, but, but overall, like by the ending, I did really like it. I liked the way that the book wrapped up. I thought it was like really beautifully done. And I don't know. I feel like this is like very on brand for Grady Hendrix, you know, um, yeah. for, like, his type of weird. And so I guess that's my next or my first follow up question is, have you read um, this book? authors or, oh my gosh books from this author before and if you have like how did you feel about his other books and like how would this one compare for you yeah i have a complicated history with grady hendrix because i loved my best friend's exorcism mm -hmm. and then i read horror store and i liked it and then i read the southern book Girl, Girl club Guide <laughs> i can never say that title but this is one of the things i love about grady hendrix though is that he does have a unique concept mm -hmm. or like these really strange titles that really hook me um, so like the, there was that one and I liked it, but I could say the like May starting to fall out of love with his writing. And then mm -hmm. I read the final Gil support group and really didn't like that one. Um, mm -hmm. So honestly, it's just, it's been a downward spiral since my very first Grady Hendrix book. And while like, I did love a lot of the comedic elements of some of his previous books, I loved how he tied it into horror. And I loved the commentary that he would have surrounding those topics. I mm -hmm. felt like he kind of missed the mark with this one for me. I feel like because it, it feels like such a disjointed book, I totally get the things that he was like saying about grief and like yeah. how he tied it into the start and the end. But then mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at the actual text and I'm like, okay, but what part of the text actually told me that this was something that was going to come up with the Obviously, I don't want to like go into like too many spoilers or anything, but like yeah. what, like the actual twist at the end, like what were the actual like things leading up to that? Like what was when when we were actually introduced to that character in mm -hmm. order for that twist to really work? You know what I mean? It's just like yeah. I just felt like we were missing the connection between the parts of this book. We had mm -hmm. the start, which I thought was really good. I thought we started off really, really well, mm -hmm. um, and then we had the middle, and I was like. Mm, it's getting a little bit like it's fallen into too many cliches in some time even my best friend's exorcism had a lot of cliches because mm -hmm. it was like using that exorcism tropes and all of the things that we love from like exorcist films and, and you know stuff like that yeah. but this one I just felt like what's the actual commentary on somebody doing something as stupid as putting your hand down a garbage disposal or like not just throwing a freaking puppet in the bin you know what I mean it's just like <laughs> There were so many mm -hmm. disconnections to like how I thought the commentary should have been versus what actually was happening. It just yeah. felt so forced for me just because I'm I'm such a big horror fan. It felt like a lot of the actual scenes were like, this is Grady Hendrix trying to be scary, mm -hmm. but 
it, it's kind of he's kind of clashing that with this really stupid puppet. And I do like. <laughs> I like haunted dolls. I like haunted puppets. You know, Child's Play, Annabelle, things like that. I feel like can do it well. Mm -hmm. But it was, it just, yeah, that's my, I just feel like Grady Hendrix and me are, we're splitting up. We are definitely. Oh, yeah. it's over? It's I okay. Think so. I think you know so. what? With every ending comes a new beginning and he's now my bookish boyfriend. So there we go. Oh, we ooh. complete each other. I, I've literally just <laughs> handed him off to you. Like, you have my scraps. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love though all the the things that you said because it's so fascinating how two readers can mm. like yeah. look at someone's work and get totally different things. And yeah. also, you have like an audiobook voice, my friend. Like I could listen to you talk about this in your <laughs> British accent should, should all I day be long. Chubby pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I play, play, that. play, play, play. <laughs> yeah, throw it in the bin. It just sounds so throw posh. <laughs> Trash. Throw it in the trash. <laughs> um, I would say my rating is my best friend's exorcism is first. That's like mm -hmm. my favorite. I was talking about this with one of my friends actually over the weekend, and I feel like there's not enough platonic love stories out there. Mm -hmm. And I just I love how he presented this beautiful friendship and how the friendship saved the day. So that I think is always going to be like one of my favorite books of all time. Mm -hmm. I think. I think this is second, which is really weird because I loved the uh, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Well, you're right. That is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever noticed that. I think that that one, like the story was more fleshed out and probably better written. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like that book was really difficult for me to read because of the symbolism of like the vampire and the children and stuff. Um, whereas this one, I actually really liked the metaphors and like the overall theme mm -hmm. uh, of generational trauma and things like that in this one. So I would say this is second and then third is the Southern one, but they're all pretty close. Like I really enjoy his writing style. So yeah. me and Grady Hendrix, we're, <laughs> We're, we're an item. That's good. Have they all been like four stars or higher for you? Yeah. So the first one was five. This one is a 4.5. And then I think that the Southern one is a, it's weird. I feel like literary wise, it's a five, but like enjoyment was a four. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I need you to read Final Girl Support Group, Lexi. I need to say what uh, you think of that one specifically. Okay, I'll I'll do that one. What do you, What about you, Gabby? Tell Tell us yeah. your rating. I think, well, I think my favorite one is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, but I think that one for me was like a four point five, okay. and then I think my best friend's Exorcism would be next, and then Horror Store, and okay. then uh, probably this one next, and then um. The Final Girl Support Group is my least favorite. I really is, didn't like that. Is that one not good? Because I, I don't know a lot of people who actually like that one. Well, just... I don't know. It's, yeah, it, it starts out so well. Like, I feel like even this one did as well. It started off so well. Yeah. But I feel like Grady Hendrix has a tendency to maybe overshoot his shot when it comes to his concepts. Mm -hmm. That I feel like you start to see the threads begin to... Unravel. Um, and also, I just saw Kendall say there. Did anyone read We Sold Our Souls? That's I have that on my TBR. I got that yeah. ages ago. And like, but now I'm just like, do I actually want to read it? I own it, so I should. I know but I haven't read it either. This is, this the is older? Like the last troll. It is one yeah. of his first. Yeah, it's one of his first yeah. published. Okay. Um, but yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of Final Girl Support Group either. But <laughs> I know it's definitely got its fans, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it just felt, I don't know, I think I didn't like Final Girl Support Group that much because it felt like not as weird as other Grady Hendrix stuff. You know, it was very, oh. it was more like straightforward and it was just it, kind of It could have been, it okay. could have been, but it, it just went in a direction that was like, why Why are we gone in this direction for? Like, is this yeah. the best you can come up with? It started to feel very generic okay. and just... Maybe I'll skip it then. Maybe I'll. Which one's better, the horror store or the final girl support? Like in your opinion, both of you. Horror store. I think horror store is better. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll check that one out next. And that one's like the haunted IKEA, right? Like that's. Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. That one's like an experience, you know. <laughs> okay. Sweet. Well, I think um, we're almost twenty minutes in, so I do think I want to start jumping into some spoilery things, just so we can get our full thoughts, you know, on the table. So if you have not yet read the book or you don't want to hear spoilers, um, we will be jumping into spoilers from this point forward. Um, I guess the first question that I wanted to ask where we can start getting into spoilers is just like, what is something that you really liked about this book? And then what is something that you really didn't like? And if you would like to get into spoilery things with those, you can. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess 
Um, the one thing that I do like that Grady Hendrix can do throughout his books is that I can feel like a character is three dimensional yes. to begin with. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah, because I really did like the the start of it, especially since we had um, Louise you know she's pregnant but she's unmarried and she is scared to tell her parents but they're actually so accepting like you know what I mean like it it kind of subverts that bit and Mm -hmm. the sort of way that see I'm I'm starting to talk myself out of this because I'm talking about (laughs) it more because then after that yeah then her parents do die and I feel like we didn't really get a whole lot of time there but I guess when it comes to I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really trying to find like the positive. It's okay if you don't like anything; it's fine. You, you can just rip it to shreds, okay? <laughs> like, no, you be you. <laughs> like, it, well, it's, it's like I, I started to like the Mark and Louise relationship as well because it felt very real to me to begin with as well. Uh, especially since I do have a younger brother, we have always. I mean, we love each other to death, but like we have. But but it heads a lot over the years too. Mm-hmm. Like, I can totally get it. But then there was just such whiplash with character decisions, especially when it comes to Louise. Mm-hmm. Um, like say for instance, uh, th- like she doesn't want anything to do with him, and then he does the song thing at the funeral of the parents. And then she's like, "Oh, I'm never going to fall out with him again. And we're just going to be on like." have the best relationship now and then literally two pages later she hates him again it's like she can't find the balance and I totally get it because they do have a complex relationship Mm -hmm. but I I just I was so frustrated seriously I just felt like they weren't acting like how people would act in those situations I was so frustrated with Mark for instance when the parents did die and he rang Louise and he was like oh they've, they've gone to a better place and it's just he felt so detached and stuff and I know some of these things are like this is Mark's way of dealing. This is Mark's way of coping. I'm just like, if my brother rang me to see my parents had died that way, I would have, I'd never speak to him again. I'd seriously be like, you're frustrating the life out of me. You know what I mean? Like, this is like such a huge pivotal thing. Yeah. And it just felt like characters didn't act the way I feel like they probably should have acted. It, 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 they start off so good though, but then I just started to progressively get more frustrated with the mm-hmm. way that they were going on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I feel I do like some parts of it, but then I, I end up not liking certain parts of it. <laughs> oh, fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. Um, well, let's see here. I I think what I love the best about Grady Hendrix, aside from his use of horror and humor, mm-hmm. is again, like kind of what you were starting to say in the beginning, how every single character feels real. Mm-hmm. Um, I just read a literary thriller that just came out called I Have Some Questions for You. And Mm. the entire time I was reading it, I was like, this feels so flat. Like they don't feel real, even though the author was explaining their backstory and explaining kind of why they made certain decisions. I just feel like it's really difficult to make a character feel fully fleshed out. Mm -hmm. And Grady Hendrix does such a great job, I think, at not writing cliches. Like every person in here I could picture. I could picture Barb and Aunt Gail. I could picture Aunt Honey. And it's so interesting because I feel like he does a great job at showing people's complexities without necessarily telling you. Like a lot of the times I feel like authors tell you that a character is quirky and different, but Grady Hendrix, I feel, does a great job at showing you. And so I think that's definitely my favorite part of the entire book. Um, But my least favorite part, is it okay with spoilers now? Yeah, 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 go for it. I I think it was like Mark's dialogue randomly in the middle. I just, I feel like that was the one thing that felt super disjointed. And I understand why he was doing that because he was trying to basically show like literally everyone has it out for Pupkin. Like, so you guys can totally, I understood especially how that tied into the greater theme of the book, Mm -hmm. but like, it just felt like maybe it was slightly misplaced there. Like it just didn't Mm. flow with the rest of the book, you know? Yeah. I know. I was kind of surprised that we got like Mark's point of view, just kind of like randomly in the middle of the book. And it was only changed for like, what, like 50 pages or less or something. Yeah. And then then it went back to the girl's voice too for the audio book. I was like, what? I know. I I was like, I was flicking through the physical book of this because as soon as it changed into Mark's voice or like the male voice, I was like, okay, so like, who is actually this? Is this Mark? And I looked yeah. in my book and it didn't even say who the POV character was. So yeah. I'm like, I would have been I so confused I if I had yeah. read it physically and it just 
suddenly switched and then what they were p- performing in front of kids uh, yeah. like this whole thing I, i'm like <laughs> <laughs> i know that was a like random decision yeah and i feel like his part should have just been edited out because yeah. they could have just explained what happened when he yeah. was you know at the university like <laughs> also it was weird like i was like there's an underground world of like puppeteers who were <laughs> like the whole thing with the <laughs> elementary school kids i was like what is this yeah, <laughs> the fact that it isn't even like really explored more or anything, it's like, well, actually, what was the point when all is said and done? Because by the end of it, I was like, okay, like this book really could have done without that part, and we wouldn't have lost a single thing. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think he was trying to get us to sympathize with Mark, but like, mm. I, I do think it could have been done in a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I well, I just, at some points, I did sympathize with Mark because. Mm-hmm. Like when they're getting rid of the dolls, like when it's just Louise and Mark and they're starting to get rid of the dolls and uh, Mark is like, oh, these are actual things like the Henry VIII dolls and stuff. Oh, they have memories attached. And that yeah. that was when Louise was like, oh, just get rid of them. Just get rid of them. And, and she came, that's when she came across as quite cold mm. when it came to like the parents and, and stuff. Because obviously she's scared of the dolls. I totally get it. But like mm. there were like memories attached to certain things and like her mum yeah. had created some stuff so it felt like a little bit of a, a, a switch with some of the characters like sometimes it felt like Louise was the one who was more sensitive and then it, it parts like that part when they're getting rid of the dolls it felt like Mark was more sensitive and just I, I felt like at some points I felt like Rady Hendrix was writing as he was going along is in like mm-hmm. sorry planning as he was going along yeah. So what what's that word? It's like a pantser, not a plotter yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. 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 That, that's what it felt like for half of it. I was just mm-hmm. like, okay, okay, now we're gonna get this, and now we're gonna get that. Okay, and then what? And yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I felt like I was being juggled. <laughs> I totally understand. Mm-hmm. Gabby, what about you? What what was your favorite and least favorite? Um, I don't know. I feel like my I feel like I the book started off really strong for me because I really mm-hmm. liked the kind of like subtle creepy things at the beginning with like oh yeah. she like t- shut off the TV and then she left and then the fucking doll would be or the it fucking would be like it was on like dog, a like, doll thing too that was weird like I was like, like, oh, shit. like that's creepy and then I liked how like she would throw it in the trash and then there would be like a little hole in the trash like he like literally just like popped out or something and I was like oh my god that's so creepy but then I feel like once Pumpkin actually started like talking and interacting with them I was like no nah, dude. <laughs> like, it was, it was so cheesy but like there were some scenes that I really liked and then there were some scenes that I was like what the fuck is going on like you know I really liked the scenes where she had to like literally like saw off his arm and like yeah. it was so intense and I was like what the fuck is going on but then the other scenes were like she got stabbed in the eye with a needle or something and he's like shooting it I'm like what yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was good but then that's when I'm also like the characters aren't acting like characters because then they go to Waffle House and even though she's like oh I need to go to the hospital and stuff like that and it's just like no, let's just get some food or whatever. Actually, then- I have to I have to tell you, you wouldn't know this unless you lived here. That no. was the most true thing in the book. Like, <laughs> no way. Yeah, it's so weird. But in the South, as someone who lives in the South and has lived in her South, like herself, <laughs> the South, like her whole life, basically. Um, it is so integral. You go to Waffle House to talk about shit. Like you, t- you go at three in the morning when you want to hash it out because everyone there like nope like the weirdest things happen at that time and so the fact that he brought her there i was like damn that was good that was really good only southern people will get that but that was actually like a celexia 100 percent case in point yeah only southern people get it but now i have more of an appreciation for that scene now then yeah and that that does feel a little bit more real yeah it was (laughs) it was so weird though because if you look everyone Mm -hmm. and also waffle house is the only place that stays open during like big crises like for weather and stuff and Mm -hmm. so it's like just a part of southern culture like well is the waffle house closed okay you're fine you know what i mean it's weird yeah. I was just that's, that's that's like, she's literally like going blind and he's like taking her to walk. <laughs> <laughs> she's like I was just so confused but yeah I mean like I said there's just there were some scenes that I really liked and felt actually like creeped out by but then sometimes it would just I just wouldn't understand like yeah. why they were doing certain things and I thought that was so funny too how she like literally sawed off his arm and then he was like mad at her for like I know <laughs> I know I was like these two oh my god like they were just driving me nuts with their like constant like at each other's throats um i don't know but like but i do agree that they were very realistic feeling characters like they felt like real siblings and like i know a lot of siblings that interact in that way you know that it's just very like toxic between them um 
but I don't know. And then the ending, I thought it wrapped up so beautifully. Like I wanted to cry at the end because like the whole thing with their dad, like that was beautiful. I know. Yeah, that was sweet. But all was what? What was he called? Freddy? The yeah. The okay, Freddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was was he ever mentioned before? I like, know. That? I don't like, think so. I feel like he was in passing, but it was so it was like very very tiny because all they knew was that the mom had a brother who died young. So yeah. like we we heard that story, but it was so tiny that it was like very missable, and like yeah. we didn't really revisit it until afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so how did you feel about like pumpkin as a character and was there ever a point where you thought that like it was in Louise's head like she was having some kind of like mental break or like did you always think like oh pumpkin's actually like you know haunting this house and like how did you feel about pumpkin's character in general well i <laughs> know what i'm i'm actually glad that they went like Rita hendrix went this ridiculous doll route because i would have hated it more if it was her mental health and yeah. if she was yeah. just saying things i would have hated it more I so agree. i appreciate that it was actually real mm-hmm. in a sense like i appreciate that but i was hoping because didn't we have um like other childhood things come to life like wasn't it a childhood dog nightmare or something come to life called spider or, yeah. or I, I, there was, there was something, I wish we had have explored that a little bit more especially yeah. like because what's his name pumpkin pun, pumpkin pump, pumpkin pump, it's like it's kind of like a puppy pumpkin 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 mm-hmm. pumpkin okay like pumpkin pump. without the m <laughs> yeah it's pumpkin without the m <laughs> that's all i could think about when i was listening to the audiobook so pumpkin was like I think more focused on then other aspects I think would have been really good because if we could have t- tied it to their childhoods and mm-hmm. made that more of the focal point rather than just on well I mean obviously we do get like other things as well but it was mainly Pupkin and hit that thing being ridiculous and, and whatever but like, I wish we could have gotten like more childhood things like if this had to be more commentary on like the horrors of childhood the things that we've seen in childhood and stuff yeah. like that I probably would have liked that more as a manifestation mm-hmm. rather than just the whole bog standard you know possessed by the ghost of a, what would he have been that great uncle oh no just right? their uncle just, just their, their uncle. uncle yeah because it was um, the mom's brother yeah yeah that's right so yeah rather than just being like possessed by the ghost of a of an uncle that they never really got to meet it's like but I mean, the end was a bit sad, though. Like it was, I will say it was a bit sad, especially yeah. since Louise as a mother, as a mother, like she, even she was like, it's so hard to, you know, um, that concept of death to a child, even though Pupkin was terrible. Um, <laughs> you know, like the fact that like, even Pupkin was scared, you know, to, to move on. Like that was scary, but I'm just... I, I I just couldn't stop picturing Slappy. Like Slappy from yeah. like, all I could picture. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. it, it kind of takes away some of the gravitas for me. And I love that people can take the ridiculousness, like Lexi. Um oh, yeah. and like and, and run with it. I really wish I could. I'm far too cynical. No, <laughs> that's a good thing. I think I it adds spice. Listen, I love <laughs> I I love the cynical. Okay, before we I go on though, can <laughs> I just thought of this. Can you guys try to imitate Pupkin just once? <laughs> I, I, wanna... I just want to hear how you would say Pupkin's like, but like just. I know what's the direct quote. Yeah, I need a, I need a line. I need a line. I, just I feel like Gabby it. would do a lot better at this, honestly. Uh, no, Gabby, I need to hear yours too. Yes. Okay, pay, I got one on page one nine nine. Oh, oh no, wait. I can't because now I feel embarrassed. <laughs> no, you have to. Come on, it makes it fun. <laughs> I'll do it too. Well, I'll do it. We'll all be embarrassed okay. together. One ninety nine. Is that what you're on? I know. I think our copies yeah. are different. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Mine's the okay copy. I'm afraid. Gabby, Gabby, you pick something for me. Oh and then we'll... God. Oh, uh, what, no. what chapter am I on? Because there's quite a few quotes in this chapter. This chapter. Uh, oh my gosh, turn the page. <laughs> chapter nineteen. Chapter okay. nineteen. Okay. Yeah, I that's... just I need to hear both of you guys. I need the impressions, and then I'll answer. I kept thinking that while I was reading this. I was like, I need them to imitate. Because after a while, you're just like, is this really how he sounds? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, God. Oh. Okay. Somebody else must go first. <laughs> Gavin, you have to, like, start us off. Okay, well, I'm turning my camera off because I'll probably look silly. <laughs> Gavin! 
Let's we'll, we'll just do the audio. I'm, I'm not putting like, a like, you know, because somebody will end up screenshotting that and add, <laughs> giving things to it. The, I'm not having this. It's not on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know everyone in the chat. I don't know what they like to get up to in this okay. bad time. So right, I'm, I'm, I'll turn my camera off for it. <laughs> Just like, look, I, actually, it works because my photo's there and it looks like I'm a Ben <laughs> Like I'm a Ben <clears throat> <clears throat> Either we don't know. <sighs> okay. Cross my heart and hope to die. Stick the needle in my eye. <laughs> Say it sounds stupid. That was perfect. <laughs> like, how can you be scared of something like that? If honestly, if Pumpkin walked in right now, I would just sit here and laugh at him. He would actually leave. He would leave without me having to go to my random aunt to try and exercise him. Oh my god, that was amazing. Okay, no. Gabby. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> I never found that one. Oh, I found it. Yeah. I know. I'm no. like, where? <laughs> yeah, it's on two, 203. Cross my heart and hope oh. to die. Stick a needle in my eye. Or you yeah. or you can just say caca wee wee because he can't say <laughs> caca wee wee. <laughs> uh. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, if you did it, I'm doing it. So you actually going to do it next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't. I, okay. <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> we're, we're not judging. We're not judging. Oh, cross my heart. <laughs> Stick a needle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I would have loved to have seen your face doing that. Actually, <laughs> why did I have to turn my camera off? <laughs> Gabby, that was amazing. No, that was a ten out of ten. Yeah. I feel so oh. good. Okay. Right, come on, Lexi. Bring it home. Bring it home. <clears throat> Keep the camera on. <laughs> I'm not doing that if you guys turned it off. God. Okay. Oh, I have to I have to really focus because like I keep laughing. What is this? You could do it. You could do it. Okay, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Cross my heart and hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. Kaka oh, wee <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> no, but actually that was pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Oh, what were we talking uh, about? <laughs> that's why you should have kept the camera on. It was I your know. idea. No, I'm sorry. Oh Wait, it's your... Wait, what were we talking about? I'm sorry. <laughs> we were I mean, talking <laughs> It was it. Um... We were talking about our least no. No. Can we were talking about Pupkin. Pupkin is a character, I think. In oh. child, childhood fears okay. and stuff. Yes. Okay, so uh, I think was the question like, did you like Pupkin? Was that it? Yeah, or like, how did you feel about his character in general? <sighs> All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I... <laughs> no, I just got it together. Okay, um, I actually, this is going to shock everyone. I loved, I loved the concept. And here's why. Hmm. I feel like it was the perfect way to bring generational trauma and family secrets as like the heart of the story. So I feel like what Grady Hendrix does best is he takes real life horrors that plague people and he turns them into fictionalized kind of like campy versions. So for example, with my best friend's exorcism, you could take that quite literally as a demon, but you could also quite literally take that as that um, Abby was abused by her date. Mm -hmm. um, and then she kind of became different after that. And then with Southern Vampire, that book, you could take it as the moms were protecting their kids against a vampire and a monster or against a child predator, right? Mm -hmm. This one, the way I got, or like what I got out of this, I keep thinking of everyone's impersonations. It's so hard to be serious now. Um, but I got out of this that we, the real horror of this was how families don't say what's actually happening. And mm -hmm. so what happens is you end up repeating the same mistake. So the mom was responsible for her brother's death. And in a lot of ways, Louise almost was responsible for Mark. Mm -hmm. And all of it had to do with the fact that no one was talking about what really happened to Freddie. And so Freddie 
was then plaguing everyone's like even Aunt Honey at the end, she was like, I don't want to say what's really going on. And it's because a lot of families, especially like Southern families and stuff, they don't want to talk about like the family secrets. They want to keep a lot of this under wraps. And so I felt like it was a great way to show how if you don't expose some of these things, you can't fix it and heal it and like move on. And like generations are just bound to repeat the exact same mistakes. And so I actually thought it was like from a literary standpoint, pretty good. Now, mm -hmm. did I love the audiobooks like narration of him all the time? <laughs> Maybe not. But like, did I like the concept? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know. I think the strong, the most interesting thing about Pupkin to me was the idea that he could like brainwash and essentially like control yes. people. Yeah. I thought that was the most interesting thing about Pupkin. Um, and I don't know, I guess I was more of a fan of him before he started talking. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's honestly like I do agree. Like, say, like uh, the way you've said that, oh, like yeah. just judging off that idea and premise alone, like it probably would have been a five out of five. Like, absolutely, because I feel like it's such a like important message to have that, especially since yeah. we have seen the breaking down of the siblings yeah. and the way that they interact and how that's affected them. Like, they could have been a lot closer when they were younger, and you know, like all of the years that they've missed together yeah. from like avoiding one another and stuff. I just I feel like maybe I'm just focusing too much on the plot and like what actually happens because yeah. like I feel like he could have interwoven that in the middle section a little bit because I do agree like I feel like at the start definitely great with like the exploration of family the end and you know all of that was great I just wish he hadn't relied so much on these tired cliches of a, a doll story without actually changing it to benefit his story because oh. it just felt like he was just repeating things we've already seen countless times in horror books horror movies and i'm just like i would have loved it if he had have woven that into the things that Pup pupkin was doing mm -hmm. in the middle rather than because i feel like it was just like being a little bit gross with having to have mark cut off his arm with the needle and stuff like if you had have just i i don't know i feel like there could have been a a tight way of exploring that in the middle mm -hmm. rather than just like having the end and the start be an impactful family story. I think so. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that's why I don't like Mark's section as much because I think – here's what I think he was trying to accomplish. I think that when Mark was saying, hey, listen, here's my backstory with the, the puppet, it was a way of saying to the audience, oh, see, like this big secret that Louise has been keeping from her brother, he's also experienced it. And if they had just talked about it, then they could have solved it way faster. But I don't think it was written as well. So I totally agree. Mm. I think if it had been written, and I don't know how, I, I'm not smart enough to know how to write that, but like- <laughs> If he had somehow written that section slightly differently with the same message of like Mark was dealing with that too. Also, my refrigerator just went off and it scared the crap out of me. We're talking about this and I'm like, what is that? Well, Ken, um, is that you? <laughs> I don't know. But like, I think if he had written that slightly better, but with the same message, it would have been stronger. But I'm not mm. smart enough to know like how to fix that. So Same. And I agree with like Justin in the chat as well. Like, yeah, I feel like the cliches are like, definitely intentional it's just like then when do you when is something just ripping something else off you know because this is a huge like commentary in the like horror um community in general is like it is good to give a nod to something as long as you're adding to that rather than just ripping it off because like there's this whole thing about slasher movies just ripping each other off and stuff mm -hmm. like that it's just like yeah they're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again without actually adding or saying anything new to yeah. the genre so it's like with a book like this is it okay to just rip off all cliches just to put it in there because oh yeah it's an intentional nod to them but then what are you saying about that cliche what are you saying about characters make these daft decisions of putting your hand down a garbage disposal trying to get this thing out like maybe just like have the characters be a little bit more self-aware in those moments mm -hmm. so that there is more of a commentary on those cliches because with Grady Hendrix I do see him first and foremost as a horror writer he's very mm -hmm. comedic and I do love when he can balance that well but like, I see him more as a horror writer so like mm -hmm. if you're going to give me a horror book fair enough use these cliches that have been in everything everywhere all at once <laughs> um but like also just like 
do something that's original to you because I feel like all of the haunting stuff, all of the spooky and creepy things that actually happened mm -hmm. has already happened in something else. Mm -hmm. You know, like a like these scenes I've seen before. The only thing that's different are the characters and the start and the end. Like this is why I'm like having such a, like I'm struggling with the middle section of the spook. I've read and seen movies just like this, but mm -hmm. with the end and start, when it comes to the characters and the family, then that's when I can be more on board with the story. But because I'm focusing probably far too much on the plot and what actually happens, I just say too much repetition, you know? I do agree that like with, you know, what people are saying in the chat too about how like mm. if this had been marketed as a puppet book instead of a haunted house book, that, you know, it would have been more, you know, on point. But I also think, you know, like, yeah, I don't know if the book would sell as well if it was marketed as a puppet mm. book. And I think that's why they probably. I, lo I love how in the live show yesterday, me and Lexi, and I, I was like, Lexi, I can't wait to find out how you sell a haunted house. And Lexi's like, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, Gabby, did you say yours? Uh, what did you think of Pupkin? Mm. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I just have mixed feelings. Like, I think sometimes he's, like, sometimes he was creepy. And then sometimes it just, like didn't really work for me but i think the like brain control thing was like the most int intriguing part of his character for me um it's just like once he starts talking and stuff and like i don't know the idea of him being like i guess possessed by the spirit of like freddy or something yeah it's kind of interesting like i don't know did you guys see that coming because like i didn't really see that part coming <laughs> no i okay so it sounds like gavin you didn't like it but i actually liked it because the whole time i was reading this i was like well, when the hell is the house going to be haunted? Yeah. It was the puppet. Like yeah. the twist at the end, I was like, that's crazy. The only thing that I found to be where I was annoyed and I was like kind of texting one of my friends about this actually um, was when Poppy all of a sudden created the puppet. I was like, that's mm. she's five. She's yeah. five. Let's not like that. What I thought was like a little bit of a stretch aside mm -hmm. from that. I was really on board. What did you guys think about that? Did you think that was weird? Because I, I was like, okay, that's too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I was pretty shocked that like Freddy was haunting the pup or like it was essentially Pupkin. Pup but yeah. at the same time, I was I kind of like with, with what Gavin said, like they hadn't even really introduced Freddy at all before. So it just seemed kind of convenient that like, oh, she had this brother that died when he was like five. It was like, it almost kind of felt like it came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but it was like, a, I, don't, I don't know, I wasn't that mad about it because like I didn't see it coming and it was something interesting that I was like, oh shit, okay. Yeah, <laughs> what I was do the scariest me. part for you guys? I'm curious because it's a horror. Like what was your scariest and what was your, like this is cheesy, this is not scary because I have two of those moments like burned into my brain. Uh, Maybe the needle because I hate needles. Me too, I hated well, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think probably uh, that. It's it just, it, anything to do with, I guess, like... Like, it, this isn't going to sound right, but like penetrating the body with something that shouldn't be <laughs> like, that, like that does yeah. get under my skin, yeah. uh, literally under your skin. So it's like maybe that, mm -hmm. but and then everything else was the cheesy, just and I, I feel like it, I don't know, because even people who I think are seasoned horror readers would mm -hmm. still enjoy this. I feel like it just really does depend on your own taste and where they align. I don't think it's like a terrible book. Um, but like, I feel like I even seasoned horror readers will still be able to get a kick out of it. it I guess it just depends on what you're like really into. Yeah. Um, but yeah, squirrel nativity, someone put squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I think, like, terrible. as cheesy as it sounds, I think one of the creepiest moments of the book for me was when the freaking TV was turning on and he was like, yes. TV because I hate, like, one of the creepiest things to me is the idea of something moving that shouldn't be able to move and like doing something, and like, that's so yeah. creepy. So, like, I think that was the creepiest part for me, but I think the cheesiest part was like when all the puppets like merged together into like one ginormous me too <laughs> that was my i was like okay i'm not going to be afraid of kermit the frog and miss yeah. Piggy coming at me like what? that i was like i could have done without that at the end yeah that was so scary um, what was and then your scariest was the tv my my scariest was poppy like when poppy yeah. was oh, like yeah. it wouldn't come off of her mm. i i can't stand it's kind of weird because like <laughs> When she was sawing off Mark's hand, I was like, okay, go off. Like, it, it, it wasn't, like, yeah. bothering me at all. But, like, when Poppy took a knife and, like, I pictured a five-year-old cutting herself and being like, it doesn't hurt. I was like, 
Mm. I know. Stop. Yep. Stop. I can't do it with kids. Like I just, yeah. it bothered me so much. It was really hard to get through that part. So uh, anything with Poppy, I would say yeah. was terrifying <laughs> and I didn't like. The whole like thing with her at the end too, how she like threw Pupkin on like the grill or the fire and she like lit him up and then she went back home and then it was like on her daughter's arm. Yes! Eyes. What? <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, that was a little like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do think the arm getting cut off was like one of the most like gory Scary. parts of the book for me. It and was, I was very like, gory. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, whoa. Um, but again, I mean, if it was like controlling his mind and like that was the only way for her to like save him. Yeah, I would have I would have sawed off my brother's arm. <laughs> <laughs> good to know good to know yes. <laughs> to save him i love him to save him i would have but yeah that kind of sucks <laughs> it was really funny though that it was at the infinity sign it was exactly in the middle of the infinity sign <laughs> uh, that's funny um okay and then i guess one of my last questions would be like did you enjoy how the book ended? Because I did see somebody saying in here that they wanted the book to end on more of a creepy note. Like how, you know, if they like sold the house and then like we get a little ending of like somebody in the house and then something creepy happens or something like still. So like we know that the house is still haunted or like, did you like how it ended with like everything being wrapped up the way that it did? Or like just general thoughts of how you felt about that last little bit? <laughs> I'm trying to remember if Grady Hendrix has done that with his other books. Like if he has... Usually, just like wrap them up in a nice sleep, like, or or if he has yeah. done a little bit of a cliffhanger. I mean, I will say, like, I'm I'm glad it got wrapped up because that means there's most likely not going to be another one after this. But like, <laughs> other than that, I this. <laughs> <laughs> other, other than that, though, I did like the ending because it felt like okay, like we are moving on. Like this is like a whole, you know, it's. I don't know because it was kind of emotional saying goodbye, but it also felt very ghost whisper. It felt very lifetime. Like I was watching like a lifetime movie. Yeah. Um but you at the love same time. lifetime. <laughs> Which is why I'm I'm conflicted because I'm like, but do I want that in my horror book? Like, do I want something more creepy? This yeah. is the thing with Grady Hendrix is I don't know what I want with his books anymore. I get a little bit of everything with each book. And it seems like we're leaning so much into maybe a little bit too farcical mm -hmm. that I'm not enjoying it as much anymore. Whereas if maybe we kind of went back to it, maybe being more scary, maybe have some farce in it too. And, you know, that that's always fun. But I don't know, with the ending, because it was, it's hard though to go from this really silly puppet talking and being like, coochie, coochie, coo and stuff like that. It's like, <laughs> and then to have to cry over this, thing because it's inhabited by a 70 year old man now I, d I don't know how old he will be now did they say like 70 mm -hmm. or something I, I don't five. know like he stayed five the whole time I know mm -hmm. he's like really old but when he dies and goes off he's still five so he's just a five-year-old yeah. so we're that is so sad years. so that's like so sad I know it reminded and me of like, focus yeah 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 exactly so I'm just like I don't know what you want me to feel here Grady I really yeah. don't know what you want me to feel because, yeah, it felt like the ending of a Ghost Whisperer episode, but then also, I don't know. I don't know. I need to sell on this a bit more. I only finished it half an hour before the live show. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All of your feelings are fresh. That's actually really mm -hmm. smart. Um, I loved it. I loved it so much. Like, I... I just felt like it was a great way to bring it together because in the very beginning, like, you can tell that Louise and Mark are just not they're just too different. But at the end, after their dad kind of like said goodbye, sort of, it was so beautiful to me that Grady Hendrix wasn't saying like Louise stopped missing them. He was saying the opposite, like the grief always stayed with her. Yeah. But even though her and Mark were so different, she would call him because he was the only person. Because it's true. Your siblings are the only people who really understand your childhood. Like not even your best friend's fully yeah. know everything that happens but my brother understands my parents and so we have like this bond that no one else will have and I thought it was great I mean like Grady Hendrix has explored different types of love we've seen platonic love with my best friend's exorcism we've seen a mother's love in southern book club and now we have sibling love and we see how complicated and messy it is but how ultimately at the end of the day 
your siblings like they're going to have your back. And yeah. I, I thought it was great. Like, I thought it was just such a beautiful, sad message. I loved it. I Listen, yeah. I, he is my man, okay? So I love him. <laughs> this is why I love you, Lexi, honestly. You make, you you make me and Gabby reconsider. You make me and Gabby think, are we the bad people here, Gabby? No, 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 no. no. Please don't. Are we the bitches? <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that was so true, though, what you said about how each of his stories reflects different kinds of love. Like, I mm. never even thought of that. Like, that never would yeah. have even crossed my little squirrel brain. So I appreciate <laughs> you pointing that out. <laughs> See, the reason it didn't cross our brain, Gabby, is because we, we probably just didn't think it was as well written. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I, I feel like, Lexi, like, you said some great, fantastic stuff. <laughs> That you make me like the book more from what you say. Oh, but when shut I, up. When, I look at the, when I look at the I text itself, it. yeah, when I look at the text itself, I'm like, but Grady ain't that good. <laughs> but to me, to <laughs> you me, just love me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've done a really good job at analyzing it. It's a bit like you know, it's school when you know <laughs> teachers tell you that the curtains are blue because the characters are sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's but Grady Hendrix is just like. You know, I just I I like the color blue. You know, it's like I feel like that's probably what. But I I love I absolutely love the way you analyze it because you really yeah. did make me make me re- rethink the whole. So I and I think no, I do think you're right. I think Rita Hendrix has definitely explored different modes of love. And somebody did ask as well, like, has he ever explored romantic love? And I can't remember. Has if he? he I can't remember if he did in horror store. I I can't remember. Oh, I mean Not that would be. Make- Oh no, not really. It's too I bad because like IKEA is a great place for a date. So <laughs> I mean, there might have been like hints at romance, but it definitely wasn't anything like central to the story. Mm. Well, that we know of. Lexi will read it and she'll be like, it, <laughs> it was all about romantic love. Did you guys <laughs> notice that all of our names have stars on them? Did you guys do that on purpose? Did you plan oh, that? Yeah. Mine just always got it on. I, I always. Like... <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay. Gabby, what did you think about the ending? Um, I so. I have like mixed thoughts about the ending too, because well, like leading up to the ending, I thought it was like, it didn't even make sense to me. Like what happened when they like found the bones of like the kid, like Freddie, like in the house. And then the way they were just like, see pumpkin, like that's you, it's time to go. And then pumpkin was just like, all right, peace. (laughs) And like, they just like walked off into the fairy dust together. (laughs) Can I ask a question? How did, how did they get Freddie's body? Because they dug it up from the yeah, was uh, like he was house. in, yeah, he was underneath like a bamboo tree, and mm. that was the Tika Taka, whatever woods that he was always mentioning. So, like, Mark remembered Pump- Pumpkin's stories of this woods, and he realized that it was Freddie kind of projecting where he was buried because he was buried by a tree. What, but what, how did they get because when he first died, like when Freddie first died at five years old, and yeah. they said it's something about it not being an open casket funeral. How did they get his body before he was actually buried properly? What do you mean, like when he was drowned? Yeah. Um, I don't understand your question. Like, did they just take his body from the funeral home, or like, how did they? It was a closed casket because he drowned, and they lied and told everyone that it was the nail, so they couldn't actually show the body anyways. And then I think they lied and buried him there because Freddie didn't want to go to like the. So they got his body before the police got his body? No, no, no. They got the, like, the funeral, I'm assuming. Was the funeral not with his body? Like, I, is that what happened? Does anybody know? Uh, I'm I'm sure because they did get his body, right? And, like, so they have his body, but then they have the funeral in its closed casket. Yeah. Because they don't have the body, but. I, no, they, I, don't... I think they would have the body. They just wouldn't open it. I don't so think they... I don't think an ant is going to be like, is he really in there? Like, I, <laughs> I think they probably just kept it closed. Okay. 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 I don't know, though. I'll research this. I'll look on Goodreads because now I'm curious. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like, how did they get his body in the first place? Like, to bury it in, uh, in the tree and stuff. Like, I don't know. But like, and, and you know what? Some things don't need answered. Some, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, our imaginations. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I thought enough. that aspect of the book, though, with that ending, was a little cheesy for me. Like, I was just like, okay, why is Pumpkin just gonna like give up and be like, well, it's time for me to go now? I guess, you know, like, mm-hmm. it just yeah. felt a little bit anticlimactic for me at that part. 
Um, yeah. Like, I just thought there would be a little bit more to that ending. But then the whole ending with, like, you know, the siblings, like, finally agreeing on things and kind of, like, mending their relationship a little bit and being yeah. able to, like, rely on each other. And then that whole thing with, like, the – it smelled like their dad's baking or whatever in the house. Like, oh, that was me. beautiful. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, because this is, like, their parents' way of, like, showing them, like, we're okay and, like, you can move on now. And, like, I thought that was – so beautiful and touching um so i did like the way that it ended even though i do think i would have preferred a little bit more of a spooky ending you know like because like mm. I, I feel like he could have had that and then we could have gotten one little chapter at the end that's like the next people moving in and then like there's a puppet or you know like i don't know Ooh, like yeah we're just like, like just imagine me in one of the rooms yeah yeah like i just think that could have been cool just because with horror i'm so used to kind of like little weird endings that like i don't need a perfect like bow ending on a horror book you know mm. see that yeah um, but, like, otherwise, like, I don't know. I don't have too many complaints about the ending. I thought it was pretty good. So, cool. Um, so, yeah, was there anything else specific you guys wanted to talk about with the book before we wrap this up? Um, I know we're coming up on an hour <laughs> for this live show here, but... Um, we could go for two. It's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> hour two. <laughs> I don't um, think so. I did, I did want to ask if you had any, like, comparisons with, like, books, movies, or TV shows yeah. that you think if you enjoyed this kind of book, you could also enjoy this other book or movie or TV show. I know, like, Goosebumps was, like, the only thing I could really think of to, like, compare it to, at least with the puppet thing. But, like, um, you know, was there anything there's, else? Did? There's a book that is a middle grade book that I haven't read yet because it's kind of an older one. And I don't know if it's aged well, but it's called The Dollhouse Murders. And you Ooh. wouldn't think, you would not think it's a middle grade book, but apparently it is. And it's called The Dollhouse Murders. Um, and, yeah, it's it's apparently, like, a almost like a children's classic at this point, And that deals with dolls and and things like that so but i've heard like people who have read it back in the day said it was fantastic and <laughs> i just need a modern day reader to read it and let me know if it still holds up because mm -hmm. i do want to like be able to i know some children's classics are a bit dated especially when it comes to like ableism and racism and things like that so i do want to mm -hmm. make sure that when i read it i know going into it but like that's the only thing i can really think of other than like goosebumps are you afraid of the dark and things like that also, oh my yeah. god are you afraid of the dark yes <laughs> I, know, right? I know right it's like it's on that level it's on that level like i wouldn't say like if you and if you enjoyed this and you want something better then i would say like annabelle conjuring like things like that yeah um, but i wouldn't say that they were similar mm. in, in, a, in a sense just the, the mm. fact that they have a puppet oh cool yeah. thanks Ooh, i've never seen that before visualize uh i i don't have a lot of experience with like dolls and puppets and like horror so i don't really mm -hmm. have anything i feel like if you like the style like the mix of humor and horror i would just recommend grady hendrix in general because i love him but mm -hmm. i i will say maybe one of you guys will know what this is when i was 16 which was a while ago okay it was uh, when, more like two years ago yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a while ago I was over at my best friend's house for her birthday and mm. we were watching a horror about a puppet man. Like, I won't say the ending. I remember the twist, but I've blocked out the movie. But yeah. does any, has anybody seen one about someone coming back to a house and like the dad used to be a puppeteer or something? Because I was trying to find it on Google. I cannot, but that's the only thing I could think of. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't think really familiar. <laughs> Did this happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, know. Um, I don't watch a lot of like puppet stuff, so it's like hard for me to remember. Like, yeah, yeah, me either. Someone might know. Oh, maybe the silence. Maybe uh, I've got one. The Barbie movie. Watch the Barbie movie if you enjoyed this. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> coming out. Right there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Oh, I just remember, yeah, actually. The, the silence. silence. No, it's that. No, that's, that's, I think it's Dead Silence or The Silence. It had silence in it, I'm pretty sure. Oh. That, yeah, Dead Silence was scary. Dead Silence was very scary. That's probably why I don't remember anything about it. I probably blocked out that whole night. <laughs> yeah, there's an old, is that the one? Yeah, with an old, old that's one? yeah. It. yeah, that's it. Oh my gosh. It's very scary looking. <laughs> very okay. scary. I don't remember anything aside from the ending because I, I honestly think I watched the whole time like this. Like, it's scary. Yeah, Anyways. fair. What about you, Gabby? Do you have any? I know. I don't things? know. I would say, like, it feels kind of similar to Goosebumps stuff, but it mm -hmm. also does, like, I do think if you enjoy this, you could enjoy other Grady Hendrix stuff, you know, because his yeah. stuff is just kind of, like, weird 
Because it only gets better from here. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Pumpkin walks so Megan could run. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's the oh, best that's amazing <laughs> right. i still haven't even seen megan to be fair you, i haven't either i haven't oh, even heard dance though kills you yeah. guys should watch it it's actually like so entertaining really like, yeah. i thought it would be so stupid but it was actually pretty fun <laughs> Wait, that's the thing. it's uh it is. it's more like thriller i think it doesn't really feel like horror scary to me then okay, why so wasn't this like that then? I know. I was hoping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think that just about wraps up this live show. So thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. I really appreciate you, you know, reading along with us and joining us for the live show. And thank you so much to Gavin and Lexi for joining me today. It's always so, so much fun. Uh, don't call you Lexi there. Sorry. Thanks, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> uh, Gabby, it's such an honor like i've done this one other time with you and every time we do a live show i like laugh until i cannot breathe so thank you so much i just had the best time with both of you honestly yes. it was an honor to be on your last book troop live show Love it. Love it. <laughs> people are just hitting it are gonna be like what <laughs> yes i know if anybody's new to the book troop they were both on last year in different months so we have live shows from last year that you can check out and hang out with us even more they were very fun, so much fun. and i think so the pumpkin much. voice idea was freaking top tier and <laughs> <laughs> it'll go down as one of the most memorable live show moments for me yeah so um so yeah so if you are unfamiliar with their channels for any reason they will both be linked down below so you can go and check them out and yeah thank you all so much for joining us we're gonna head out have a good rest of your